The Nerdium. Hello, 40 years ago, I thought ICOM receivers were the best quality. Which brand would you consider to be the best today? And let the fisticuffs begin. <laughs> so we're talking just receivers? Uh, well, if we're talking receivers, you almost have to look at the Sherwood engineering tables. Yeah. And of the top five, three of them are Yesu. And then the other, and, and then and I think there's, then the other two are flex radios. Flex and, um, or is it uh, X Elecraft? Elecraft. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the three new Yesu SVR radios, the FTDX 101. Um, I can't remember the other two. I think the 710s in there. Um, mm -hmm. then the, the Flex 60, whatever. 64 or something. Yeah. Elecraft K3 or K4. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are the receivers. Um, but so I listened to a podcast a few years ago uh, with uh, Mr. Sherwood. I can't remember his first name. Robert. But he says anything in that top 20 is you're cutting a real fine hair. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's some real good radios in that top 20. But, you know, we all hear, you know, oh, it's either got to be these five. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you can throw any one of the ring on any day and depending on the antenna, you know, or the band conditions in the, or, yeah. the, you know, local, local conditions too. Like, so Michael and I both have FTDX 3000s. They're certainly not SDR radios, uh, but they're some of the best triple hat radios that were made. Mm -hmm. And any day of the week, I'll, I'll put that receiver up against anything. I love it. Yeah. And they're and probably I've, what a... Yeah. yeah, they're down about 15, 18 on the list though, but um, yeah. yeah. Like, and I've had a, I've had it side by side with the K3. Uh, the K3 is a Cadillac. Don't get me wrong. But receiver wise, there isn't much difference. Mm -mm. They're both very good radios. So, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to pick up, I'm not going to pick one pony on that race. Because <laughs> there's just so many in that top 20 that are perfectly fine. Modern transceivers are so good these days um, from that, you know, you, you, you really can't buy, you know, the receiver sensitivity is so good um, that you really can't buy on that. You really, you have to look at the other factors, um, you know, what, what the rig provides for you, um, ergonomics, you know, um, user interface, um, connections on the, on the rear of the rig, you know, it's, it's amazing what, they don't no longer build into transceivers these days. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, every radio has got the same features, right? Mm -hmm. They all do. So, I mean, it, it used to be that you had to get a CW radio or you had to get a sideband radio or, you know, they made a 10 meter radio or a uh, 75 meter. Radio, right. So like it used to be that every radio was completely different. No, nope, not anymore. Yeah, they all do the same thing. So really, it comes down to you know what um, what works best for you. Are, are you yep. going to be doing portable? Or are you this for a home? You mm -hmm. know what do you, what do you want? So, yep, yeah. How does it? You know, if you've got the ability to go to a, you know, like a ham radio outlet or something, and sit down in front of a couple of rigs and try them out, or you've got friends that have different radios and you can try them. It's it 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 helps a lot in in making that that decision on which one is, you know, is, is the best for your needs. But, um, yeah. Uh, Arnold had a good point. Don't get a flex if you want to do soda. Very good points. Seven on the air activation with a flex. I want to see video of it because if you carry all that other stuff up there, you probably got a couple cameras. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sherpas. You've got Sherpas. <laughs> yeah, lots of Sherpas. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, make a list of radios that fit your operating style. See the which ones are closest to the top. You know, it's, that's, I think that's, that's a, that's a, a really good yeah. way to kind of approach it because. Yeah, you know, that top 20, top 25 wonderful radio you mm -hmm. know and as long as you treat it well it'll last you a lifetime mm -hmm. so and and the the sherwood list is not the it's it's not the it's not the arbiter of what is the best transceiver out there because they're he's just looking at receiver sensitivity and there's right. yeah like i said there's all these other factors 
So yeah, sensitivity and selectivity. Yeah. Remember that from your from your uh, general or your extra. That's yep. what they're looking at there. Yeah, you could get a great radio and live in the yeah live in the yes uh, yeah. live in the city and not know the difference. So. Yeah, Dave, Dave said the perfect there. You spend a fortune on a negative one hundred thirty dB noise sensitivity, but you have ninety <laughs> dB. I mean, that's like, so a good example about this, so I, the way I see it, is I have a spectrum analyzer over here, right? Um, and mm -hmm. when I tune cavities, it's been a little while since I've tuned uh, tuner cavities, um, we're, I'm aiming for like 90, 100 dB um, rejection, right? And yeah. But there's enough noise in my house that my noise floor is 90 dB, and I can't get lower than that. I can't see lower than that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it really is kind of frustrating. Like uh, I don't have to basically turn everything else else off in the house to get that extra ten dB. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Dave, Dave's a retired broadcast engineer. He knows the numbers. He sees it just like I kind of see it there. And yep. um, yeah, you can have the greatest. You can have your system Ferrari, but if it's a great room in your dryer uh yeah, <laughs> you're, you're kind of out of luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Dave's primary rig in his shack is an ICOM seventy three hundred, so it's um, he's yeah. all he, and that that fits into, well, it 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 works in my noise floor. So, yep, yep, yeah. The the previous radio I had in here was another good radio. It was a um, ICOM. Oh gosh, I can't even. Um, it was an ICOM, right? I can't think of I can't think of what it was. It's, it was like a Pro Two and a Pro Three, but it was the original version. Um, okay. Anyways, I had a hard time with streetlights, streetlights and neighbors' TVs. Oh it yeah. Cause S nine noise all the time. I got the three thousand, and it had good roofing filters. Uh, it's not the seven hundred three Hamlet kilohertz. Um, mm -hmm. Seven fifty six. 756, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's what it was. ICOM 756, but it didn't have the uh, selectivity and the uh, uh, out of band rejection as the 3000 does. Um, so that helps me a lot, but still, I got noise. I can't hear everything here. I and, But I'll go out into a park or into like a natural area where there's nothing with a G90, and the G90 is not a superior receiver by any means no, it's just good no. not superior but then i'll hear everything at s1 and below yeah oh yeah so yeah, yeah. you know that's that's that, that's the beauty of the park and that's why i think that's why you know the your 891 has got the staying power is because you take it out into the field it doesn't matter it's not the it, it doesn't have the right. you know the 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 best receiver out there. It doesn't have the capability of hearing a mouse fart, but um, right. It's but still, it's rugged and it's reliable and it'll work. And there's yeah, you know, and you take it out to a place where there's no noise, and you can you can pull out that two by two signal and. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.